Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are about to do something that we swore we weren't going to do again. I don't know about swear. Well, <laughs> we are going to take Harvey on a journey and we're not prepared. We've been working on this holiday rambler and by now, hopefully you've seen the video where we, well, you and Jack work on the 30 year old stand up jet ski. And so, um, we've been busy. Tyler's been sick and still sick still sick. And the problem is we have a wedding out of town tomorrow. And, um, we booked a campsite a while back thinking like, yeah, we can do this. And, um, so here we are, it's Thursday night and tomorrow morning we leave for camping. So if you haven't been watching the channel, this is Harvey. This is our 1976 Dodge cruise air. We worked on Harvey basically all last year, got him in pretty good shape. Went on a couple short trips, but this one's going to be our longest trip yet. We're probably going to have to go on the expressway if we want to make it there in any kind of time and hope to make the wedding. Mm. Um, but we're going to Lake Michigan. So we're, we are staying in Michigan, but we've kind of stuck around, you know, the thumb area so far. Um, we're headed west. We're going to go out to Holland, Michigan, which is a really cool part of the state. Beautiful beach. We'll be staying at Holland State Park. Yeah, in a previous video, a couple people commented like, hey, what's going on with Harvey? They saw the hood was up. So Tyler did tackle a couple projects. We've got a couple more we want to do tonight so we can be ready to go in the morning. Oh, flawless. Yeah, so let's walk through a couple of things that he did. And then tonight we still have to do... Um, <sighs> so we're going to insulate the fuel line because Harvey has a problem with a hot start maybe it's a vapor lock we don't know but the fuel line i'll show you does run fairly close to the engine so i got some insulating material for that um going to try to tighten those belts so we can get rid of that squeal um oh got a new distributor cap and rotor button i haven't done that yet for some reason i just overlooked it i don't know but i got that going and um i think that's about it pretty easy stuff all right so when we first got Harvey, we checked the initial compression. One of the cylinders tested low at 70 PSI. So here I have taken out the spark plugs for a second test. Um, they're a little sooty, nothing oil covered or anything like that. So we popped in our compression tester and we're ready to retry. Here's our compression numbers. They all look pretty decent. Cylinder number four was at 90, which it had come up 20 PSI. Not the best, but I feel pretty confident that it's gonna be okay. I've got something else I want to check off the list. It is the oil pump. So Harvey has had low oil pressure for, well, since we've owned him. I believe that the oil pump that is on there is probably the factory original. I have opted for something different. And this is it. This is our new Melling high volume oil pump. Now the beautiful thing about this is on a Chrysler 440, it is an externally mounted uh, oil pump. So all we got to do is bust the old one off of there and get this one on there. Oh boy, gosh, sweet Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, all right, we're getting that. It's crazy how they put them in on their sides like that. Yeah, good design engineering by Chrysler. So I got that oil filter taken off. I took off the four bolts, and with a little finagling, I finally got that oil pump off of there. Yeah, it looks like you were really whacking at it. Oh, just a little <laughs> tappy here and tappy there. So here's the old and new pump. Uh, the new one was a little bit thicker, so I had to run and get some new hardware for it. Here's the longer bolts that I used, and then was on to paint. The uh, new pump was bare metal, and so I wanted to protect that with a new coat of blue. I like your zip tie handle engineering there. Hey, I came up with that all on my own. <laughs> Seems to work. <laughs> it did. It was a good job. While the paint was drying on the pump, I decided to take a couple minutes and scrape the gasket off of the old surface and get it prepped and ready for the new pump to go on. Here I've got the new gasket on the back of the pump. It took a little finagling to get it to line up just right, but I ran in the bolts finger tight. Rest assured, I did torque them to spec, and then we were ready for the new oil filter. I did go ahead and buy a new filter. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, pay no attention to that. I do have a drip pan down. But being that this oil filter has to go on 
horizontally. Pre-filling them is only good to a point. Another project we needed to check off the list was the wipers. And last year, Tyler did a temporary fix when they stopped working with the zip tie. And so we thought we'd try to fix them right this time around. Yeah, funny enough, the zip ties held up, but the other bushings failed. So I ran to the parts store, got some new bushings, and then I had to squeeze those into place. Kind of a challenge, but uh, it worked out well. Yeah, good as new. The last issue that we tackled but hadn't shown on video yet it came after that little gas eruption we had, and um, we thought we should take a look at the fuel filler neck and the vent tubes. So I wound up ordering a new fuel filler hose. Uh, the old one was at a upward slope into the tank, and you guys uh, pointed out that in one of our earlier videos. So anyway, I put the new hose on there, got it situated so the fuel would drain into the tank properly before the pump handle was kicking off and it just wouldn't take fuel properly. So that new fuel hose solved all that. Yeah. And you also addressed the vents where the one vent hose, that hard line up here was actually doing the same thing where it was sort of forming a trap. And then we had that whistling number happening on the other side. Right. So I did adjust that hard line vent there, uh, that fuel hose or that vent hose goes along the top of the tank. I got that more of an appropriate angle, and then on the other side, that fuel vent hose was actually whistling whenever we would try to pump gas. So I reoriented that and got that kind of in a uh, better spot. All right, so we're going to hop back to present day and get this thing ready to go on our wedding road trip. So just a little backstory on Harvey and his overheating problem. Harvey runs well, but he does not like to get gas, apparently, because when you shut him off, and try to restart him five or 10 minutes later. It's just like a no start situation. It'll crank and crank and crank. So we've done numerous things. I've done, uh, I've converted the ignition to HEI. Um, we did the, uh, the fuel trap back there, the fuel vent hose. Um, I rebuilt the carburetor a long time ago and it does actually fairly well. It's a big thermo quad. Uh, 850 CFM carburetor. And uh, I think though that it is a, um, it's either a carburetor problem or a fuel line problem that runs next to the engine. And we're getting some, uh, some hot start issues. So I got this heat sheath and uh, some stainless zip ties. And this, I'm going to use this to insulate that fuel line and hopefully um, just kind of keep things a little bit cooler. But ultimately, we might need a new carburetor. Maybe EFI? I don't know. We'll see. What's EFI? Fuel injection? Electronic fuel injection. Look at me. I know. Look Jeez. at you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's our fuel line coming into the carburetor. As you can see, it runs down here behind the head, in between the exhaust manifold and engine, and then up front here to our fuel pump. So I am going to put this heat sheath on there and try to insulate that. Is this a silent video? <laughs> so I've got to take one end of the fuel line off so I can slip this sheath over it. I decided to do it at the carburetor and I think it'll be a little bit easier. So we will see. So is that whole sheath, as we call it, one long piece that you just... Yeah, you tri trim to fit. Yep. Okay. You can either use scissors or a knife. Um, I haven't used it before, but I've seen it used and uh, gets pretty good reviews. So let's... Uh, Give it the old taste test here and see what it looks like. Ooh, oh. I don't want to cut that part off. That probably isn't oh. heat rated though. <laughs> it's um, as long as it is. 36 inches. Sheesh, I thought we had to go all the way back to the gas tank. No. Oh, well, that's too bad. <laughs> all right, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's too bad. I agree. No, I would not have wanted to do that. All right, let's do this silent film style. Okay.
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Why are you so out of breath? <laughs> that was exhausting. <laughs> Golly. All right. Let me, uh, I got to get a creeper so I can get underneath there and kind of feed it down. Okay. <sighs> what in the devil? <laughs> oh, the stinking creeper wheels. <laughs> no, wait. I'm stuck. <laughs> stinking creeper. Did you blow up the creeper? Not on purpose. I don't know. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna jack up this uh <laughs> right front real quick. Oh my gosh. Wait, you are? Yeah, so it makes it easier on me. What are you talking about? A jack stand in the whole bit? No, just a jack. Yeah, I mean, and a jack stand. <laughs> You're going to let her rip? <laughs> I hope it doesn't rip. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> let me know if you need me to hold that bend up here. Okay. Um, let me know when it's kind of like stretched out to its... I mean, it's pretty much stretched, honestly. Okay. Um, actually, I'll bring it down a little bit probably so it's more like that I mean okay. it's got plenty of clearance there and then right now I mean these things get super hot don't they the valve covers yeah not as hot as the exhaust so okay. that's why I'm trying to keep it more tucked uh where the fuel line runs in between the engine block and the exhaust okay. that's that's your primary heat source <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody get this guy a creeper seriously <laughs> oh shoot well i feel like you're pulling it weirdly far down soon wait is it where's it at well yeah you want me to hold the top i mean if it's stretched out does it feel like it's in pretty good shape yeah okay all right yeah I feel reasonable about that. I feel great about it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? All right. Yeah. I think I can. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I, uh, I'm just going to put a couple zip ties, one on each end, and I think we should be okay. Okay. Here I go again. <laughs> hey, forget the creeper. I need a lift. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we got our fuel line sheath on there now we'll do uh since we're in here we can do the distributor cap and rotor button real quick and i'll uh, grab that Ooh, that's real quick this has had new plug wires and spark plugs really brand new ignition all the way around you can see some corrosion on the uh, the contact points in the cap there. I'll show you the new one, just for a reference. Very much clean and shiny and uh, mm -hmm. anything to help, you know? Yeah. Here's the rotor button. Um, it looks like it's in pretty good shape, but you get a new one anyway. You might as well get a new one. There you go. I'm going to pop it on there. Okay. And like I said, I'm just going to do a one-for-one -one swap here. They do make it hard to access anything, don't they? Yeah. I know everything is so right there. There it goes. Okay. Oh, there's one. I think I can get the other one from around front better. Come on, little buddy. There it goes. All right. Distributor cap, rotor button, done. Um, but that means we're at the point now. What I would like to do is find the timing marks on my crank here and the, uh, the timing um, pointer. <laughs> I mean, what? There's a, there's a tab that sticks out. Oh. And as the crank goes around, there's timing marks on the crank. And as you uh, put the timing light on it, those marks 
you can see them. Uh, All uh, right. I, d- I thought you just said the timing wiener. Timing wiener? <laughs> the timing wiener? <laughs> oh. uh, that's what why I asked. Know. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going with this stuff? You said it. <laughs> One wiener later. Where's my other light? I don't know. Right here. Okay. I All mean, right. that's what we need is more light shining here, right? <laughs> we, well, uh, I mean, you can never have enough light. But you can't really look at anything from the top side here. If you, you have the fan shroud... And of oh course, gosh, the fan shining the light. Oh, sorry, we did fail YouTube school. I don't know if we mentioned that, but I can't see nothing really. I mean, nothing. So let me get back under here. <laughs> uh, you wanted this camper so bad. No, it was more your grammar. <laughs> what? My grammar. Yeah. What does my grandma have to do with this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh I'm sorry. You kicked me. <laughs> Put your grandma under there. <laughs> She'd do a better job than I am right now. Okay, I see the timing mark. I think I've got to get look at it from the wheel well, which somebody commented that's probably a good place to start. Golly. <laughs> I don't understand. So this is why we haven't really done much with the timing. Right. You've been doing it by ear. I have done it by ear. Okay, so I've got my timing light hooked up. The engine's up to operating temperature. I disconnected my vacuum line and plugged it at the carburetor base. So um, right now I've got a mark on my crank pulley and I'm going to loosen my distributor bolt so I can adjust it. So if you see that, just to the right of the radiator hose there, there's a white line and the timing tab is just above that. It's hard to show with a uh, timing light. But anyway, I've got to move my timing uh, mark up in between the tabs. I'm going to adjust the distributor Oh, I can hear it. Yeah, it brings up the uh, idle a little bit. See where I'm at. So I got to go back the other way. It's getting closer this way, but it sounds like it wants to die. So I have to bring my idle up on my distributor. I mean, my uh, carburetor. So let's do that. I'm going to move my uh, timing back down a little bit. See where the uh, timing mark is? All right, I still got to take it further. So I'm going to turn my idle up a little bit. I can tell it wants to kind of die off. Move my distributor a little bit more. Uh, it's getting closer. Keeps getting closer. Man, that's wild that it needs to come up that far, I feel like, but yeah. I'll turn it turn it in a little bit more. Doesn't like to come down that far. Is there a wire that I am touching that does something? There's a different smell in here right now. Do you uh, smell it? Yeah. What is it, it? The fuel is burning differently now that the timing has been changed. It's oh. not running as rich. I can tell that much. Yeah. I can hear the exhaust note has changed as I've messed with it too. It's getting pretty close, but let me uh, make another adjustment. 
try something like that again, it'd be a big mistake. That backfired through the carburetor, which I don't like that. Whoa. Oh man, that backfired again. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I Oh, I don't know, but there was like a Is that your vacuum line? Did it come unplugged? Where? Cuz I heard like an air noise. That well, last time. The uh it the carburetor it backfired through the carburetor and the carburetor started making uh like a weird noise. And I don't understand where that came from. All right, hang on, because why do I smell gas so much? It's probably yeah. from this. Ooh, it is bad. Yeah. Well, it was... Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, so pause for a minute because... Okay. That smells like just straight up gas now. Standing over here. <laughs> <sighs> it's not leaking or something, is it? Oh man. It's No, it was it's burning my nose. Yeah, it's burning mine too. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah. Um that's a problem. Yeah, it's it's like way We went from like old car very exhausty smell to like smelling pretty good to smelling like just straight gas right i have my curb that's my curb idle screw that's the screw i was running in to turn up my idle the threads are wet on that now and then there's obviously gas in between our um yeah there's like I mean, you cranked it in so far it crack something no no not at all i feel like when it backfired through the carburetor it could have either spit a gasket or cracked this oh, oh I, I, I don't know oh <laughs> that's what we get for doing preventative maintenance right oh <sighs> something went wrong <laughs> Dang, nab. All right. We're going to think this over <laughs> in the house where it doesn't smell like gas and I can do laundry. I have to figure out what I'm going to wear to the wedding tomorrow. Clothes, right? Um, yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, honestly, it'll take a little bit more diagnosis, and we just don't have time for that. Um, so we got to call it 
not good at this point. And I think the new carburetor is definitely a lot closer to being here than it was before. All right. Well, we'll see you in the morning. All right. See you guys. All right. It's the next day. We are clearly not in Harvey. It just, I mean, the carburetor popped a gasket or something when it backfired. Yeah. So, um, so I have a theory as to what happened. I think the, uh, I retarded the timing too much to the point where I was increasing the, uh, the fuel in the carburetor and when it backfired yeah it definitely caused some sort of something to pop it's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> not right well harvey's needed the new carburetor for quite some time now it's pretty obvious and why not now we'll get a new carburetor and uh get that timed up but first we're going to go over here and check out the west side of the state and then uh Let's see, maybe we'll be able to take Harvey out for a test drive and then ultimately camp for the end of the season. That would be sweet. Yeah, I'm excited to see how well that heat shield snake skin performs. <laughs> Did you say snake skin? It kind of is like a snake skin. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're basically lucky we didn't burn the whole thing down, but we're here in the excursion. We've got the Cardinal camper back there. Got Jack and Ella in the back. Where's Ruby? There's Ruby, dog. Um, Ruby's actually going to go stay with a friend, so we're getting there to pretty soon to drop Ruby off. And uh, she won't make it to the campground with us this time. We just we want to be able to explore the area. You can't really take a dog everywhere, and you can't really leave her alone. So um, anyway, I've been trying to edit and uh, basically getting carsick. This road is so bumpy we're on i-69 headed west wish me luck but uh we'll check in when we get to where we're going bye ruby all right we just got off of the expressway the road here is equally nice <laughs> uh right here we've got the airport in grand rapids it's the gerald ford airport president gerald ford was from grand rapids his um, presidential museum library, library is in Grand Rapids, and he's actually buried there too, as far as I know. So in the library, not in the library, <laughs> but outside. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is a cool place to visit. I stopped in there uh, one day a couple years ago, and hmm, fascinating. And he's not related to the other famous Ford family in Michigan mm -hmm. that you may have heard of. <laughs> I don't know. Granddaddy Henry. Granddaddy Henry and Uncle Edsel. <laughs> so we're about probably a half hour away still. And it's almost two o'clock. Wedding's at five. Still have to set up the camper. But I'm not stressed. Are you stressed? Not one No, day. no, we're not stressed <laughs> at all. Yeah, we're getting over there. The weather's supposed to be beautiful this weekend. Um, you know, we were hoping to have Harvey here, but we're thankful we have this backup plan and uh, looking forward to a good time. We are getting close. There's a marina here. This actually is not Lake Michigan on that side. That's Lake Makatawa. We'll pretend I know how to say it, but um, we're definitely getting close to the state park. Got a lot of action starting to happen here. I think it's Jack Zonked. I don't even see him. Oh, I thought we forgot you when we dropped off Ruby. Okay. Oh, Lake Makatawa. Lake Makatawa unit camper registration. All uh, campers register here. Sorry, full. Uh -oh. Okay. Well, we have a site, so we should be okay. So this state park has two distinct areas. We are in this section, which has a little more grass and trees. And we're on the Lake Makatawa side. And then there's a whole nother side that is all just basically um, parking lot on the beach, which is actually also cool. Just a, a whole different scene over there. So we'll have to check that out tomorrow. We're not going to get to do much exploring in the campground today because, yeah, we've got to get to a wedding. And it starts in two hours and we have to set up camp and shower 
<laughs> so <laughs> don't forget getting dressed. All right, we're looking for two oh seven. Oh, it's on so, the right. Yeah, I think we're getting close. Oh yeah, five right, six right seven. Here. Wow, these sites are narrow. Holy uh, cow! And we have a tree. All yeah. right, I gotta figure this out. So all I gotta do is back in. Right oh, there. that I, I thought our type was, our site was the one with the tarp. Right. So we're this one. Yeah. Nice. All right. Do you need help backing up? I do. Got a playground. We got to this site. Is that them? I don't know. No. Eh. Yeah? No. Yeah? All right. That's it. <laughs> All right. We got to go. We made it to the wedding. It was crazy. I had like 10 minutes to get ready, but we're here. We're going to have a good time, and we'll see you tomorrow. All right. See you guys. Good morning. Good morning. We've got the breakfast going. Jack and Ella are still in there snoozing. And uh, we didn't mention, but our, our oldest two kids went back to college this week. So to add on to everything else that was going on, we had to move them into school. But um, yeah, we're here. We're going to get this breakfast going. And then um, we're going to head on into Holland today. There's an old Dutch windmill here we're hoping to take a peek at. There's some cool shops in town. We're right on the shore of Lake Michigan. So we'll show you a lot of those awesome things. And um, and then we're gonna head back home and fix that Harvey once and for all. It's gonna be the most reliable RV in the continental United States. <laughs> Tyler is an excellent bacon cooker. He keeps them all in a perfect row. I just sort of throw mine on there in a wad and hope for the best, but... Um, that's sacrilege. He doesn't like me to do it that way, so I allow him to cook the bacon. And <laughs> it's really worked out well for our marriage, if I do have to say so myself. It does. Sleeping Beauties woke up. Ella decided she wanted chocolate in her pancakes, and we didn't bring chocolate chips or anything, so she's cutting up the Hershey's for the s'mores. Jack's doing our eggs. One shell, that's not too bad. We'll just fish that out of there. All right, he's gonna go for the one-hander. Oh. Hey, you're a regular Bobby Flay. <laughs> I kind of do wish we had Ruby here, but we're gonna go explore the town today and she wouldn't have been able to really go with us. Such concentration. He is good. Our kids all have loved to cook, and we love to let them cook. Basically, it's it's nice. Oh. Oh. An actual Dutch windmill here that is still in. They like took it all apart, reassembled it here in the United States, and they grind flour with it still. It's like the oldest one in the U.S. that's still in operation. So maybe we'll check that out. We're going to try to find some wooden shoes for Ella back Ooh. to school tomorrow. I think she needed <laughs> new shoes, so. are looking good. Awesome. We're headed to the windmill. Zwan. Oh, the yes. Zwan, oh. which means the Swan oh. windmill. So we should be there shortly. It's oh. a big mural over there. What does that do? I know. Wow. Creepy. Is <laughs> <laughs> that church? Is that a church? I don't know. Butches. Oh, look out for this guy. Yippee. What is it? Yeah, it's a church. Wow, is it an old courthouse? It looks like it could be. Wow. <laughs> okay, we are here. 
Welcome. We've got the wooden shoes already. We can get a little peek at the windmill up over here. This is cool. <laughs> I'll never be right again. The girls at Dutch dance usually wear six to nine pairs of socks. Oh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Here we are at the windmill. I don't see it turning, so we'll check that out. It's a little historic site sign. Basically, we had to negotiate with the Dutch government because they protect these windmills to get one here. It was built in 1884 using pieces from older mills named De Zwan, the Swan. And it had been damaged during World War II and had deteriorated. They allowed the sale, but required that Dutch millwright supervise its relocation and restoration. Bless you. Oh, oh, that was a little mouse. We purchased it for $2,800, took it all apart, put it on the ship, and brought it over. Wow. Yes, that cost a half a million dollars. <laughs> so we built this brick tower to get the blades above the tree line. Oh. As you go up, you're going to notice first, second, third floor is what we built, and then the fourth and above is mostly what came from the Netherlands. Okay. Second floor shows how we sifted and packaged the flower. Prior to COVID, we were doing 10 to 12,000 pounds. COVID stopped us and we lost our miller during that time and so we're in the process of getting back at it. Mill is up there trying to, ooh, nice birthday butterfly. He's up there trying to get the blades turning right now. But we won't be grinding today, so. Let's see, so this is what it looked like in the Netherlands. So we built this part and then this was the original windmill. Wild. Yeah. Traditional hand powered stone grinder. Can you turn it or no? I don't know. Yeah, me. Oh. Oh, stitcher. Flywheel stone grinder. These are getting more serious. A sifter. Bolter. Flower descends through the tube from a storage container located on level three. Oh, up here. Comes down, rotates and sifts the flower. Oh man, I hope they get it cranked up. They said the guy was trying to get the windmill going, but they haven't been grinding flour since COVID. They're trying to get back to doing that. So it's kind of a bummer. Look at all these tools. Different bolts and washers. Butts and bolts. Wow, that's a biggie. One floor. Feel free to All walk right. outside. If there's one more floor you can go up to where the millstone is and let me know if you have any questions. All right, thanks. Thank you. 
water. So it yeah. doesn't turn. Let's take it out. What do you think, bud? It's cool. I want to see it spin. All right, they're trying to get this windmill to catch the wind, so they're turning it a little bit. We'll see if it starts spinning. Oh, here it goes. It's going. Wow. A slow day though. Right. And they wouldn't be grinding much flour today. We're kind of right What's that holding? Some kind of a counterweight thing. This is like why Patty's not at work today. He had to haul things. 14 floors below. So this is the original. Look at all this stuff, you guys. All of this to grind flour. That seems like a lot of work to grind flour. Look at that. Holy cow. What I went through is exactly the same as this. Really? And I was looking to think about it. Oh, that is really cool. It's the big shaft. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell the other person. Oh, look. Look it. Huh. Oh, oh yeah. There it goes. So it's spinning outside. Wow, and that triggers all of this internal to start grinding. All right, we're heading out. Overall, cool place. We didn't know there was some big dog event going on today, so a lot more dogs than usual. Bummer the windmill's not making flour, but still a cool place to visit. It's wow. the back hatch. All right, I don't know for certain if that's the power plant, but um, one of the cool things about Holland, Michigan, we're gonna go downtown here in just a minute, is in 1988 they installed a system that takes excess heated water from their power plant and runs 190 miles of tubing under all their roads and sidewalks so there's no salting plowing anything like that in the winter time um, it melts an inch of snow an hour that so, sounds incredibly impressive and expensive yeah all right, why are we beeping like crazy? What is happening? Oh. <laughs> we are. We, we installed a strobe light. <laughs> if it does this the whole way home, oh my gosh. Oh, it's the back hatch, you think? I do think that. Oh, I'm gonna geez. check it now. Everything's fine. I don't know. The lights are still on. Ah, uh, they're Guaranteed still on. fix. No. Oh. What in the world? That's what its problem is then. It's fine. Back in the car, I don't know. I think maybe we fixed the problem with the beeping and the flashing, mm -hmm. but. I don't know if you want to count your eggs or not. I got a door jar light on. Okay. All right. Well, we are headed into downtown Holland. We're kind of just right on the fringe right now. And we're gonna try to get some lunch, maybe meet up with some family, eat some food, do some shopping. Some wow. of those kids had their left hand over the right side of their chest. Did they? Yeah. Wow, that's weird. Maybe if you take a selfie with them, it'll look good. Is that a spot right no. there?
fall easy. All the candy choices in the world. The little wax bottle with the juice. Gross. Oh, gross. <laughs> oh, it's juice. <laughs> yeah, it's juice. <laughs> that would be my last choice. Although, no, I'd rather eat that than black licorice. Yes, <laughs> I agree. We haven't really shown people uh, our house before too much, so I guess it's time to show them oh, yeah. our well, place, our little, it's not much, but it's, it's homey. <laughs> it's cozy. All right, so don't tell anyone, but this whole coast of Michigan is all, well, all sandy beach like this. It's gorgeous. Good one. God. Is it cold? I got up and then we'll dive off. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're about an hour from sunset. We collectively decided we weren't going to stick around. We haven't had dinner. The kids have been also asking for ice cream all day. So, ice cream for dinner. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go check out what the uh, general store situation is up here. And um, we might just have ice cream for dinner. We also need to get firewood and have s'mores for dessert. So, <laughs> look at this building. Looks like it's got like a smiley face on it. Right. That's cute. <laughs> kind of crazy, no? It's probably a staircase. Yeah. Ottawa Beach General Store. School so soon, time for Blue Moon. I bet the out of state non Michiganders don't know what that means. Ellie, you want to say what Blue Moon is? Blue ice cream? What's yeah, blue ice cream. Like <laughs> what does it taste like actually? I can't A remember. Blue Moon. Oh, well. I'm I can't from remember. Ohio. All we had was vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> A blue flavor. Does that answer your question? So Ella just asked if we were back in Michigan, and the answer is yes, we've never <laughs> left Michigan. So, <laughs> so we went to the beach this morning, got everything packed up, hit the road. We're going to pick up Ruby and then continue our drive home. 
So eventually we're gonna to get to unload this. We'll start working on Harvey and we'll see you guys there. Ruby's barking at us. Hey Ruby. <laughs> Hey guys, we made it back from the trip. We got Ruby, we got home, we got to work right away on Harvey. And um, we have some awesome video of that and it was not our intention to end this video this way, but we've got so much in this video already and the, the carburetor action, it just took a long time. It did. And so um, we're gonna include that in our next video that's gonna be coming up soon. So we're gonna end this one here. Um, we wanted to thank Debbie who sent us a super thanks. We're always just blown away when that sort of thing comes in out of thanks, the blue. Debbie. So thank you, Debbie. Thank all of you who've been watching. We are sorry for this cliffhanger. We know we're not like that or we don't do that on purpose, but um, we just had to get this video out and that next one will be coming soon. So thanks to everybody that subscribes. We really appreciate everything, all the comments, uh, the likes. We are super excited and uh, we like turning out this material and we're going to get it out just as soon as we can. All right. We'll see you guys soon. All right. See you guys.